The demands on game capture have more than doubled this generation, with modern consoles and PCs offering 4K 120fps, HDR, VRR and beyond, and even though they all come with internal capture and streaming options, they fall far below the outputs possible, for your eyes only, or at least your screens. Algato have always strived for maximum quality and they were the first company to ship an external VRR capable capture card with the HD60X. And I reviewed that almost two years ago now and it's been a part of my capture and frame rate tool ever since. The team have not rested, working hard to add more features and increase quality. They now release two new capture cards this month that raise the game again, which they sent both to me for review. Most of this video will be focused on the most exhaustive of the two, the 4KX external capture card, but they have also upgraded or updated their long-standard 4K Pro MK2 card to offer VRR and 8K pass-through. More on that later. So in the box we get the unit itself that looks near identical to the previous HD60X but now states 4K on the front, so no confusion. The back offers the same USB-C port and two HDMI 2.1 sockets, one for the input and output respectively. This comes with a suitable Agato HDMI 2.1 cable which is required throughout your gaming chain to ensure maximum quality. Another vital element is the new Algato braided and labelled cables, which include the USB 3.2 Gen 2 cable that delivers a full 10.2 gigabits per second bandwidth, which is required for the demands of such high frame rates and pixels. It offers the premium HDMI 2.1 capture of 4K 144fps in SDR, with 1440p60 or 4K 30HDR also an option. It can still pass through 120Hz HDR with VRR, irrespective of your capture choice. The big ticket item is this is among the first 4K 120 HDMI 2.1 capture cards, which includes HDR and variable rate refresh, along with auto low latency modes and even G-Sync support meaning no machine from Steam Deck, PlayStation 5 or PC misses out as every source can be passed through up to 4K 144fps HDR and captured up to 4K 144SDR. PC players can pass through 1440p 240fps and capture at 144fps or lower. Now the data centric amongst you may have questions such as, but wait, the PlayStation 5's HDMI pushes 32 gigabits per second and the Series X can push 40 gigabits, with the HDMI 2.1 spec itself maxing out at 48. So how is this going to work along a 10.2 gigabits pipe? Well, first thing is, this only impacts capture and not pass through, as this is all handled directly inside the unit itself, with the HDMI in being fed immediately to the HDMI out port, meaning the exact same quality and no extra lag, or at least less than four milliseconds worst case based on my tests. It's actually faster than the older card by default, as ALM mode is working perfectly on both my LG, Samsung, and even my Sony OLED screens. Internally, the input is split off and then fed down the USB-C cable into your PC and relevant storage of choice, which must be compressed. Now, this means that we need to factor in the quality and frame rate maximums into your capture tools. HDR10 adds more bandwidth, which is why 4K HDR is limited to 30 FPS capture or 1440p for 60 by lowering the bitrate via that chroma subsampling as 4K60 at full 444 chroma, i.e. full RGB, exceeds that pipe. Now these are the options you see on PlayStation 5's 4K-1-2 or on the series consoles with its 422 options. Lowering the chroma to 422, which is largely invisible or lossless for games and movies, but on PC, text can be obvious. That same 18 gigabits per second now fits inside the 10 gigabits limit at 9. The table on screen shows you the pass-through versus capture levels available, which will include HDR, which is why a USB 3.2 port on your PC is required. Now you can use a lower 5 gigabit USB 3.1 port, but resolution and frame rates will be limited. I did work with Algato on this during the early review stage, and they are looking to add a port check in the software to advise you the speeds you can achieve. But just be sure to check your motherboard settings 
with a bright red port or a USB 3.2 port certainly giving you the speed you need. Sometimes you'll see these as USB super speed. The Elgato 4K capture software enables a simple but minimal capture tool that will show the frame rates and resolution of the source and capture. As before, this includes VRR rates and can also be captured to a CSV file within the software. I covered this extensively in my prior HD60X, so go and check that video out for more details on VRR and how it all works. It generally serves its purpose, but the reality is most will integrate this into their Elgato Stream Deck suite or other tools such as OBS which both cards work seamlessly with and allow you to capture HDR source through to your screen and it's internally tone mapped back to SDR for your capture making it a seamless integration and an easy one to fit into your tools and certainly my own frame rate and capture tools which I have fully integrated it in. As many know, I cover and care greatly about latency and both these cards offer a huge boost. Auto low latency mode is now supported, meaning your TV can still switch to the lowest input latency automatically, along with it breaking free of my previous frame rate capture level. Using this card, I can now capture Series X and PlayStation 5 with VRR at full 120 FPS in full 4K. Before this card, I was restricted to 1440p. It's a huge boost for me and any reviewer or streamer that wants to deliver the best quality to the viewer that the device can provide. And the fact that all these features come at no cost to your local play session, you can simply leave the card in situ all the time, even when not capturing, which is bliss for me. Finally, that 4K Pro update is largely similar to the previous MK2 model. It requires the same internal PCI 2 X4 slot as a minimum, and it really allows you to hook your set up, but still enjoy those benefits of 4K 120 pass-through with HDR, auto low latency, and VRR, but the capture levels of the card remain the same as before, and it also allows you to tone map HDR back to SDR within your capture. You can capture at higher bit rates and quality than the 4K X, but 4K 120 is not possible. 1440p 120 FPS is the limit. The main reason for swapping is you can now ensure you gain the same high quality and seamless integration into your capture suite, but gain all the features of your screen, which enables you to tone map HDR pass through to SDR capture, including VRR at a sharp 4K 60 FPS. The only thing to note on both for VRR capture, which I covered in far more depth in my HD60 review, is that capture will remove the tearing just as it does on your screen, but it will be captured within a fixed rate container, such as 30, 60 or 120 FPS. Now, although close to the same rate as achieved on screen when captured at 120 FPS, the refresh on your screen will alternate on a per frame basis. Whereas in the capture, it will be an even 8, 16 or 33 millisecond cadence depending on the rate chosen. Due to this, audio sync can sometimes cause issues and it is best to unbuffer this when captured when VRR is enabled. In summary, both the 4K Pro but certainly the 4K X are quality cards that can capture excellent quality just as before and in some cases even better. They offer a myriad of compression options, even up to lossless if you have the capability. The top range 4K and frame rates will necessitate some restrictions on that, but as you see with the comparisons now, using the Last of Us Part 2 remastered fidelity mode in VRR, I could not capture the full 4K 50-ish output at that full 120Hz output prior to this card. Now with the 4KX, I can, ensuring the sharp, clean pixel quality of that 4K display is present over the previous 1440p capture limit. Without this Elgato card, I would not be able to capture VRR games and cover them in my performance reviews for the past few years here and over on IGN Performance Reviews. And the card is also fully compatible with Nvidia's G-Sync screens, meaning if you play and capture on PC, consoles, or even Steam Deck, which now offers VR support, this is a single solution with a wide range of functions and features and superb image quality. It comes highly recommended for me, and it's certainly taken pride of place in my suite over my HD60X. 
One extra benefit is this new card is fully compatible with the latest iPad Pros, which means you can plug it in and use it on review features very simply and easily without the need to lug a huge laptop around with you. Overall, I'm impressed with the quality and feature set that Agato have delivered here, and I'm very thankful for them for allowing me to review both of these cards during this early review period. Remember, if you like what I do here, then I am completely self-funded and independent. Please comment, like, and share down below. And if you want, you can support me over on Patreon with exclusive and early access videos and articles. Anyway, I'm out, but I'll see you very soon on the next one.